Like electric potential energy, voltage is not a vector, so we can add multiple voltages from different charges directly, and all we have to worry about is the positive and negative sign. Do not lose them. You have to add them algebraically. And again, a lot of people get a little bit confused on electric potential, so please refer back to the unit presentation for more explanation. Like gravitational potential energy, voltage is not an absolute value. It is compared to a reference level. But we're going to assume a reference level where V equals zero, and we will do that when the distance from a charge generating the voltage is at infinity. It is allowable to assign a specific value to V in calculations. So in other words, instead of having to write this all the time for the difference in voltage between two points, we'll have a unique value for that voltage, and we'll just call it V by assuming that V at infinity is equal to zero. Now we're going to put in the gravitational analogy to help understand this concept. We'll start by looking at a topographic map, so if anybody's ever camped or gone hiking, maybe they've seen something like this. Each line on the graph, on the map here, represents the same height above sea level value. So you have it down here. So for example, this one would be 7,000 feet. This one here would be 7,200. You see sometimes they put the number there too. The difference in height between each line is the same, although the space between each line may vary. So you see we're counting here. Every line goes up by 40 feet, but the space between them can be quite different. It can be quite small or a bit larger. The space between these lines represents the steepness of the incline. A large distance represents a gradual incline, and a small distance is a steep incline. We're going to highlight the 7,000 foot line in yellow, and notice that points A and B are at 6960 feet. Points C and D are at 7,000 feet. Right? You can see they're right on the highlighted line, and here's A and B at 6960. And let me just erase that. The incline is steeper, oh, didn't get everybody. The incline is steeper between B and D because the distance between the lines is smaller. The lines are closer together, which means it's probably going to be harder to walk in this area because the the hills going up more like that. Here's a hill where between C and D, between A and C, maybe it's a little more gradual path. Let's now take a side view of a mountain here. Okay, kind of, and we can see the cutaway lines there. We're talking about differences of height, and notice we have the same differences. We go from zero to 50, 50 to 100, then 100 to 150. So the, the difference between each line is 50. We've also labeled them volts because we're going to start transitioning into lines of voltage. We are now going to rotate this guy so we look at it from top down. And then we get something similar to the topographic map from the previous slide. And here's our 150 volt line here that coincides with this, the top of the mountain. And again, sorry about putting volts on a mountain, but we're going to transition. We're going to use diagrams like this to show lines of voltage. Not this, because voltage has nothing to do with gravity or mountains, other than some of the math looks similar here, some of the pictorial way of looking at it. So, there we go. We've rotated a mountain, so we've looked at the side view at the top and a view from the top down. And now we'll go to the next slide and talk about equipotential lines. So we will now map electric potential lines using a similar approach to what we did with the topographic lines. We call lines of the same potential equipotential lines. Equal potential. These lines do work like the topographic lines. They show where the electric potential is the same, where with the topographic maps it showed you where the height above sea level is the same. They are drawn in equal intervals of voltage, and the space between the equipotential lines represents the strength of the electric field. With the topographic, it was how quickly you went between heights, and now it's how quickly you go between voltages. The larger the space, the weaker the electric field. With the topographic lines, the larger the space, this, the uh, 
less of an incline you had, the easier it was to walk up or down. Let's now overlay the electric field lines. The direction of the electric field lines are always perpendicular to the equipotential lines. So our green lines here, the circles, are the electric potential lines. And we went from 20 to 15 to 10. And they're getting smaller. The voltage gets smaller the farther you are away from the charge. The electric field lines are perpendicular. They're these blue lines here. They are farther apart when the equipotential lines are farther apart. So let's just erase that. So you can see the distance here between your electric field lines. Here they're a lot closer at the larger voltages. That's telling us the electric field points from high to low electric potential, just like a positive charge does. For a positive charge like this example, the equipotential lines are positive, all right, 20, 15, 10, and they decrease to zero at infinity. We said that earlier, that voltage at infinity is zero. A negative charge would be surrounded by negative equipotential lines. And what's the only difference there? Let's see if I can write this. This would be negative 10, right? This would be negative 15 volts, volts. And this inner guy would be negative 20 volts. And that also goes to zero and infinity. So the magnitude decreases, but you could say the value, you're going from negative 20 to negative 15 to negative 10, all the way to zero. So that's increasing numerically, right? But the important thing there is the magnitude. Negative 20 volts has as much energy as positive 20 volts. It's just in a different direction. You can generate more interesting equipotential lines, like the topographic lines on a map, by more complex charge configurations. This configuration is probably created by a positive charge over here and a negative charge over here. And notice, right in the middle, there's zero volts. The voltage due to both charges cancels out there. Note the signs of the equipotential lines. They're negative near the negative charge and positive near the positive charge. Also, the direction of the electric field vectors, those are the red arrows there, they are always perpendicular to the lines that are tangent to the equipotential line, and they point towards the lower electric potential. All the lines are pointing in that general direction towards this negative charge. And let's see, if we were to take the, uh, this is where, at this point here, we want to take a perpendicular line to find the electric field at that point. So it's tangent to the equipotential line, and then we draw a vertical line for the electric field. Same thing over here. We take a tangent at point E, and then we draw a perpendicular line. I didn't really do that right. Let's just erase that so we can see that better. We draw a perpendicular to the line like that. Excuse me. Yes, parallel line, excuse me. And then a perpendicular to the parallel tells you the direction of the electric field. What about a uniform electric field due to two parallel plates of charge. So now we just don't have one charge or two charge, we have entire planes of charges. The equipotential lines will be per perpendicular to the electric field lines. So the electric field lines are those blue lines going down like we showed earlier. And what we have is the electric potential decreases in the direction of the electric field. So if we start at plus V up here, the electric field goes down, so the electric potential will decrease to zero at the bottom. There also is an equipotential line along the surface of each conductor, as a conductor surface will have the same voltage everywhere. This will be at zero, this will be at plus V. Notice how the lines are all equally spaced, so that tells you you have a uniform field. It is not getting stronger or weaker anywhere between the plates.